Good morning, modern steaders. Woke up this morning at 3 a.m. again to more downpour rain. We got just under half inch of rain first thing this morning. April showers bring May flowers. May's gonna be here soon. Good morning, girls. How we doing, Willow? You're doing like three weeks. Come on out. Let's go. I've been trying to wait to feed him until Hope's out. Let them know she's part of the gang. Hope, you better get out of there. They're gonna kick your butt. Girls better watch out. I got some hay coming in. Hope, you're gonna wear the hay. You're covered in hay, girl. Did you decide to get out of the feeder? They kick you out. You can't stand in the feed. No. There you go. Hope's been doing really good with the other goats. They're not picking on her as much. She might not be with them all the time, but they're they're getting along a lot better. Willow's due date is May 12th, so. By then, they'll definitely be integrated full time, even at night. And then once Willow has her babies, that's gonna change up the dynamics of the goat herd too. Morning, chicks. Oh. Tomorrow we're gonna take a factory tour of where they built the barn kit. We're looking forward to that. I don't know if you guys can see it from here. I don't know how good you can see it, but that little brook is flowing good. And then this right here normally has no water in it, and it's overflowing. It's time to clean out the chick brooder. Give him some fresh bedding. It's starting to smell a little bit. We haven't even had these guys for a week yet. And they've already doubled in size and starting to grow feathers out. It always amazes me how fast the Cornish crushed meat birds grow out. I know it's eight weeks from start to finish, but right when you get them, this just boom, they explode. They're not for you, Figaro. They're not your chicks. Watch up, guys. Fresh bedding, fresh water, and new food. They're gonna be in hog heaven. We've been getting a lot of questions lately about starting chicks and raising chickens in the backyard. Our friend Amy Fuel from the Fuel Family Homestead just came up with an awesome book, and it's the perfect time of the year. I think this is one of the best things that's happened for the backyard chicken flock owner in a long time. Amy just came out with her book, The Homesteader's Natural Chicken Keeping Handbook, which is awesome. It's loaded with so much information on how to raise your chicks naturally and keep them healthy. Her book starts off right from the beginning, chicken history, chicken terminology, chicken characteristics, and breeds. And then she gets on down into hatching, purchasing chicks, raising chicks naturally, which is awesome. You can't find that always easy. <laughs> A broody hen and her chicks, I mean, she dives deep into raising your own backyard flock, whether you're gonna hatch the chicks out with a broody hen, with an incubator, if you're buying your chicks, if you have bigger chicks. The book is just loaded with so much 
We got one of the top secret copies. Shh, I'm not supposed to be showing it. No, I'm just joking. She gets into their diet. How good you can see that. She gets right into their diet. One of the chapters I really love is using herbs in feed and on the pasture. She gets right into all the different herbs and explains what they're for, what they're good for. Like right here we got chickweed. Most chicken keepers have the wild herb growing around the backyard. You can find this creeping plant growing just about anywhere and your chickens will love it. Chickweed helps support the digestion tract and respiratory system. So it's just so awesome. Dandelions. Don't kill those beautiful little dandelions that pop up in the yard. Instead, pick them for your chickens or allow your chickens to free range where the dandelions are. That's an awesome answer if you got an overfestation for dandelions. Instead of having to go out, pull them, or kill them, just set your chickens free on them. Dandelions are high in vitamin A, B6, vitamin C, and K, and are also full of calcium and fiber. Chickens need a lot of calcium so they can produce a nice hard eggshell. So, bam, instead of having to always be supplementing with oyster shells or eggshells, give them the dandelions this time of the year. They support bone and heart health and are high in antioxidants. Dandelion greens are a great source of omega-3s. The more omega-3s our chickens eat, the more omega-3s we're going to get from their eggs. Oh. Dosage. Offer freely as you wish in season or plant a pasture where chickens roam freely. Could you imagine having a pasture full of dandelions? It'd be pretty neat looking. They'd be, be yellow. As long as the chickens ate all the flowers, you wouldn't have none of those little seeds heads popping up and flying all over the place. But if you didn't, man, when a big wind gust came and they went to seed head, they'd just be like little paratroopers flying everywhere. <laughs> So I really love the section on herbs. Last year Amy came out with the Homesteaders Herbal Companion book, so we know she knows what she's talking about when it comes to herbs. That's a great book. If you haven't seen that book, or if you don't have it, there'll be a link in the description down below for this book and for her new book. Another really good chapter for raising your chicks naturally is the herbal treats and medical products for chickens. Back here she gets into the intestinal parasite tincture. She has over here how to make your own tinctures. There's one other tincture that I really liked. An antibacterial and antiviral tincture for your chickens. And she's got one for cleaning out your coops. I can't give away Amy's recipes, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna give away two of these books. In the comments down below, just leave a comment saying you want in on the giveaway, and then I'll pick two random winners and then Amy will ship out these books to you. She's got a really good chapter here talking about hatching out chicks, how you do it, choosing the right incubator, and then just the different steps along the way, which is really good. She gets in from the incubator, from purchasing eggs, where to get eggs from, from candling, what to look out for on eggs, and she's got awesome pictures. I'm a huge visual learner, and this book is loaded with high quality photos. I don't want to spend the whole video talking about this book. I could, but we won't. If you want to find out more about this book, there's a link in the description down below that's going to send you over to Amazon. And if you click on it, you can look through the book, and the book, you'll be pre-ordering it, and it comes out May 1st. If you're thinking about getting chicks, you already have chickens. If you've been doing it for a while or not, this is a great resource book for raising chicks naturally. I know we'll be going to it anytime we have an issue. I love being able to have two or three sources to go to. Read one, read two, and see which ones work. Sometimes you'll try one for your animals and it doesn't work. Try something else. And it's always great to have a lot of books on the shelf like that. While we're right here at the Pasture Pig Mobile, let's see how much rain the barrel has in it. Can we see in there? Oh, we can, let's see. It's right here. So that would be higher than this valve. Turn the valve on, see if we get water coming out. I hear it. Look at that. Boom. Shut it off. These nipples also have a screen on them. If they get plugged up, you can take the nipple back off and clean it out. All right, the nipple's in there. Let's see if it leaks. Nope, we're looking good. Awesome. Uh, now we're just missing the pigs. Hopefully in a couple of weeks, we'll be having the pigs on the homestead. 
We've been having a lot of people asking us about our maple sap taps. We didn't have a good run this year. We need to collect the buckets today. I think what happened is, is we had so much groundwater in the ground that it froze and then it never warmed up enough earlier in the season to defrost the ground to get the sap to flow. And then later in the season when it started to, the trees were already budding out, so we weren't collecting it. Believe it or not, guys, it's already day 18 of the eggs being in the incubator. That means today we're gonna take the eggs out and remove the egg turner and put the moisture a little bit higher in the incubator. Now our eggs won't look pretty in there. Ready? I don't know if you guys can see this on camera, but this one, it started to form, but then it stopped, and you can see the eggshell is very porous. So in a porous shell like that, you're usually not going to have good hatch rate. But that's one out of six. So the other five are doing really good. These ones are hard because the shells are so dark. You made them pretty again. Yep. Yep. Now time will tell mm -hmm. how many will hatch out. Ah, wait. Put it on after. Now we need to make some egg noodles. Yep. Last night we cooked up a good grass fed roast from farmfoodmarkets.com. If you guys make a purchase on their website, if you use promo code LA Roast, you'll get 10% off your order. I'll have a link in the description down below. Tonight, we're gonna make some, what are we making tonight with it? Um, beef stroganoff. Beef stroganoff, but first, we need homemade egg noodles. You wanna crack the eggs yes. in the milk? In the milk. In the milk. And I have a little thing for the shells. Okay, we can do that. Do I just separate it? Nope, we don't need to separate it. We just need the eggs. We gotta beat the eggs and we'll just eat them in the milk. My best trick for slicing an onion so you don't cry is to leave the root on. Doesn't always work, but nine times out of ten, leaving the root on the onion until you're done keeps the tears away. I'm gonna slice the onion as thin as I can.
right at the very end, I got a little tear in my eye. Then I want to slice them in half. Make sure the pan's warm. Today's video is a little bit shorter than normal. I had to do quite a few things off camera to get ready for the barn build. It wasn't anything super interesting, just stuff we had to get done. I had to apply for the building permit. We should be hearing back on that shortly. I talked with, had some guys come out here and look around for site work and to bring gravel in. So all the fun little nitty gritty stuff that needs to get done that's not very exciting. I'm looking forward, we're all looking forward to going and doing the barn tour tomorrow. It's going to, I shouldn't say barn tour, we're doing the factory tour of the company that made the barn kit. They make a lot of other different kits. We're excited to go check them out, see how it's made. It is another company that's in a neighboring state. It's in Vermont. So it's really exciting for us to be able to go check out a local company that made this. And the timbers in the are all made from all the wood is made from local timbers in the area that I come from. I think the guy told me New Hampshire, Maine, Vermont, and New York. So it's kind of neat to be able to buy a product that you know where it was made, you're supporting local companies, and that the timber all came from your region. So we're excited to go check it out. It's going to be a fun day. We're going to get ready for that tonight, and we'll see you guys right back here tomorrow at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom.